An aircraft engine usually can be run several hundred hours before it has to be reconditioned. The engine on this airplane has done a lot of flying and it's due for an overhaul. It's a little engine, but it runs on exactly the same principles as the big jobs. And the inspections and repairs you'll do on it are basically the same. So let's get the airplane inside the hangar and go to work. While you're letting the engine one of the first things you ought to do is be sure all the tools you'll need for the job are handy. You don't want to waste time hunting for the right tool. That means you'll have not only screwdrivers, wrenches, drifts, and the like, but measuring gauges, containers, funnels, clean rags, and metal tags for marking parts as they're taken from the engine. You'll also need an engine manual containing a table of limits and helpful instruction on proper procedures. Since you're interested chiefly in the cylinders, the preliminary steps you take before removing the cylinders will be covered quickly. Check the ignition switch and fuel shutoff valve to be sure they're both off. Move the engine's, engine's cowling, including the baffles. On this airplane, you'll have to remove the propeller to get the front cowling off. Now you can spray the whole engine with cleaning solvent and dry it with compressed air to get rid of the oil and dirt that's accumulated. And always keep a fire extinguisher handy for an emergency. Next, disconnect the ignition wiring for spark plugs and remove the spark plugs themselves from the engine. Now you'll have to take off the exhaust stacks and disconnect the intake pipes from the cylinders. Then the push rod housing is going to be disconnected and you'll be ready to pull the cylinders. You'll find an exploded diagram of the cylinder and valve assembly in the engine manual. You're concerned now only with the cylinders. Later, the valve mechanism will have to be gone over. Pal nuts are used on this engine to safety the cylinder hold-down nuts. Remove them first. It's always a good idea to string nuts on a piece of wire. Get lost. With the pal nuts off, remove four of the six hold-down nuts, leaving two nuts on temporarily to hold the cylinder in place. Before pulling the cylinder, put the piston at the top of its stroke so that you can get at it when the cylinder is off. You can do this easily by turning the crankshaft with a timing tool and watching the piston through a spark plug insert. Now you can remove the last two nuts and the cylinder will be free to come off. There are several things to remember when pulling a cylinder. Do it carefully. Pull the cylinder out straight. Use one hand to support the piston so it won't bang down against the engine when the cylinder comes free. Keeping one hand on the piston, lay the cylinder down carefully. Now push out the full floating wrist pin that holds the piston to the connecting rod. And when you take the piston off, let the rod down gently so it won't drop against the port. Whenever you tear an engine down, you have to be sure each part goes back in its original position. There are so many identical parts that you can't remember where each one goes, so tag it as you take it off. Metal identification tag tags are best because you can dunk them in cleaning fluid and the number won't come off.
soon as the cylinders are pulled, be sure you cover up the open cylinder port so dirt, loose wire, nuts, or tools can't get inside accidentally. When you've removed all the cylinders and pistons, and covered up all the open ports, you can move to a workbench where it's easier to make your inspection and repairs. Your overhaul job will be a whole lot easier if you're systematic about it. Line up the cylinders and pistons so you can work on them in order. Notice that all the parts are tagged, so there'll be no question where they go when you reinstall them. Now you can go to work on the cylinders. Take the push rods out and lay them aside, and take the connections off the push rod housings. Now, remove the six screws that hold the rocker box cover to the cylinder. There's no safety wire to cut here because lock washers are used instead. Remove the rocker box cover so you can get at the rocker arms. Sometimes the gasket will stick to the parting surface. You can loosen it with a flat blade, but don't use a sharp screwdriver as it may damage the parting surface. This rocker arm shaft comes out easily. Sometimes you'll have to tap them out with a soft drift. Be sure to tag the rocker arm so you'll know which is exhaust and which is intake. You're ready now to clean the cylinder. A revolving wire brush on the end of a drill is good for removing carbon from the head. Be careful, though, not to scratch the cylinder walls with it. The outside dirt and oil will come off by using a spray gun and cleaning solvent. Then compressed air will not only dry the cylinder, but will blow off dirt and carbon. Before you can take the valve assembly apart, place the cylinder over a wooden form that fits the inside of the cylinder head. This will hold the valves in place when the springs are compressed. You'll also need a simple tool like this to compress the springs. A pair of tweezers is handy for picking out the little split locks. They're hard to pick out with your fingers. With the split locks removed, the compressing tool can be taken away and the parts lifted out the spring retainer, and the inner and outer springs. You can get the spring seed out with the tweezers, too. Hold the valve stems as you take the cylinder off the form so they won't drop out. Take care when removing the valves not to let them scratch or dent the cylinder walls. Now examine the cylinder head very carefully. A 10 power magnifying glass is a big help. If cracks are found, or if the head is loose, the whole cylinder will have to be replaced. Examine the cooling fins carefully for cracks. One of the fins on this cylinder is chipped and will have to be repaired so it won't get bigger. Profiling is what the repair job is called. 
Use a round file at the apex of the crack to prevent it from growing further. Then use a flat file to smooth off the edges. Next, inspect the flange for nicks, evenness, and condition of the hold-down nut recesses. The rough edges of any nicks you find can be smoothed down. Fine stone dipped in oil is the correct tool for this. Then polish the spot with a piece of crocus cloth. Examine the inside of the cylinder by barrel thoroughly for dents and scoring. The wall of this cylinder is in good condition. Sometimes you'll find a cylinder has been scored, like this one. This cylinder would have to be rebored before it can be used again, or perhaps replaced. Since your cylinder barrel is in good shape, you can go ahead with the job. You're ready now to check for out of round and taper. First, look up the maximum allowed in the table of limits. The taper wear and out of round allowed is two thousandths of an inch. Use a dial indicator to check the cylinder bore. Set the dial to zero. As you glide the indicator along the barrel, Watch the dial to see if the pointer varies more than two thousandths of an inch. The taper of this cylinder is satisfactory, so you're ready to check the diameter of the cylinder. With inside micrometer, take one measurement at right angles to the crankshaft. Take a second measurement in a direction parallel with the crankshaft. A comparison of these measurements will tell you if the cylinder is out of round. Record the larger diameter of the cylinder barrel on a check sheet. Later on, you'll measure the piston and subtract its diameter from the diameter of the cylinder. In that way, you will find out if the clearance between the piston and cylinder checks with the table of limits. It's a good idea to check the threads of the spark plug inserts. Damaged threads can be fixed up by chasing them with a tap that has the proper size metric thread. Now take the intake elbow off and examine the parting surface. Take the gasket off and inspect the intake flange and exhaust flange for nicks and imperfections that might need stoning. Look at the studs, too. Here's one that will have to be replaced because the threads are in bad shape. The best way to get an old stud out is with the stud remover turning it slowly so as not to damage the threads in the stud hole. This stud should be discarded and a new one installed. If there's any sign of looseness in the old stud, the new one ought to be the next oversize. Before installing the new stud, 
Make sure the threads in the hole weren't damaged when the old stud was taken out. If you find them in good condition, coat the new stud lightly with a compound that will ensure tightness and run it down finger tight in the hole. One method of tightening the new stud is to use two nuts. Put them on so they face each other. Then lock them together tightly. Now you can turn the outer one with a wrench and the stud will turn. Drive the new stud in tight and then make sure it's the same length as the others. You've now finished reconditioning this cylinder. When the other three have been gone over in the same way, the next job will be on the pistons. When you come to them, you'll have to scrape and clean them first. Inspect them carefully for defects. Measure them to check clearances. And finally, install a new set of rings. 